and are never. Amen. Jesus died so we might live men. Our two texts for tonight are both of our scripture readings, first from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, and also from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Dear friends of Christ, what type of situation or thing do you envy? Do you see others who want more money, fame? Many of us probably don't transpire or conspire to those things, but let's take a little closer look to home. Do you ever envy the sports talent of someone else's son? Do you want your daughter to have more musical ability than the girl who got the part? Do you ever think, I wish my child had more smart, like the next door neighbor? When your child cannot stay out of trouble, do you wish you were another parent? How about if your spouse gets some glory? Are you, ha are you happy for them or secretly jealous? If a friend gets a new job that they love and are rejoicing with them, do you rejoice with them or are you wondering, why can't I have a job like that? What if someone bakes better than you or fixes the car better than you or has better hair? What makes you envious? Tonight is another deadly sin. You've already figured it out by now. Envy. First Corinthians chapter 13 reminds us that love doesn't envy. It also doesn't boast, doesn't rejoice in evil or wrongdoing. Love also believes and love endures. Love which rejoices in truth never ends. Now, we don't have to be envious because we know our worth before the Lord. He individually made us and loved each of us. He gave his son for each of us. We don't need to compare ourselves to others. We don't have to constantly say, I'm just as good as they are. The truth is, we are probably not. C.S. Lewis makes the point that no one who ever said that actually believed it. Love knows the value of everyone else around us. Love knows that Jesus shed his blood, not just for me, but for every sinner like me. God has plenty of blessings to go around. I mean, we don't all want to be blessed with the same thing, do we? I pray that you and I are happy when others have skills that we don't have. We don't envy. We are glad that they are there when we need their talent. And we can also take root when we get mad at God for not giving us what we think we need or deserve. This happened to Cain. The Lord accepted his brother Abel's offering, and this made Cain jealous with envy. His envy led to hatred. His hatred led to murder. He didn't love his brother, but even worse, he didn't love God. You see, Cain shows us something that in German was called Schadenfreude. We don't have an exact English word match. But this word is actually two words pushed together. Harm and joy. It is joy at your neighbor's harm. This is the ugly side of envy. We rejoice when our neighbor fails. Cain rejoiced to see his brother dead on the ground. Do you ever rejoice at someone, someone's failure? A political opponent? A smarmy co 
sadness and another's good fortune. But when that happens, the saddest person ends up being you and I. When we get no real joy out of seeing a friend that an acquaintance or a family member get something or accomplish something or achieve something or experience something, we are sad indeed. Jesus destroys these sad displays of envy we exhibit. He comes into the world as the least of all. And then he takes the worst of this world, not the best, and he goes to the cross to suffer under it and die on it. God's not envious of us. He loves us. He wants us to be content with our skills and our money, money and our blessings and our place in the world. But remember this. What God has promised to you is far, far greater than anything this modern world can produce. His perfect heaven waits for you. And it is all yours because Jesus loves you and gives himself for you. Be it for you.